so mild cognitive impairment is um, a syndrome basically describing um, patients who have uh, mild impairments in a variety of cognitive domains. Um, it was coined in the uh, 1980s um, and later developed and really came to the forefront in the mid 1990s with the um, uh, publication of uh, criteria, research criteria. And these uh, criteria um, were really developed to capture um, the pre-dementia stage of Alzheimer's disease, which uh, according to the criteria at that time were defined by the presence of um, dementia. But it was well known that um, patients who developed Alzheimer's disease, dementia, um, had a pre-dementia state and that it was important to try to capture this phase. Now, um, at the present time, we of course also know that uh, patients with uh, mild cognitive impairment not all go on to develop uh, Alzheimer's disease, but may develop other neurodegenerative disorders or may have other underlying causes of their cognitive impairment, which are not neurodegenerative, which are not progressive, and which are actually treatable. So with regards to diagnosing mild cognitive impairment, uh, the real job for the physician is really finding the underlying cause of the mild cognitive impairment. So uh, as physicians, we should not stop uh, merely at the diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment. And really when you, when you look at, at studies um, examining uh, mild cognitive impairment, you see that uh, quite a lot of uh, persons or, or patients with mild cognitive impairment revert back to normal co cognition um, indicating that uh, the patients that are seen in memory clinics have a wide variety of etiological backgrounds. And as I said, some of these are reversible. It might be depression, um, it may be um, other neurological disorders that are treatable, it might be other um, diseases that are not related to the brain as such, such as uh, cardiac diseases, respiratory diseases, et cetera. Um, and um, the hallmark in, in diagnosing uh, mild cognitive impairment or the, the main focus should be, really be on a thorough history, um, both of the symptoms, how did they develop, um, are there other neurological symptoms or other symptoms indicating other diseases, um, what is the, the, the disease trajectory um, and, and of course, also a, a thorough um, physical and neurological examination. And I think at that point, it is time to consider biomarkers because they are, of course, also important. Um, and uh, in many instances, this would include a structural scan, either a CT or an MRI, depending on uh, what, the, what the suspicion uh, of the physician is with regards to the underlying cause. Um, if the, the physician suspects a neurodegenerative disorder, um, he or she may also consider a more extensive neuropsychological examination carried out by a neuropsychologist, for example. FDG PET, uh, lumbar puncture, um, BAT scan, um, amyloid scan, etc. I think one important thing here is um, if the suspicion is uh, with regards to Alzheimer's disease or another neurodegenerative disorder as the online cause, um, at this stage, it is also very important to consider pre-biomarker counseling. So to have a, a thorough discussion with the uh, patient about what the uh, aim of um, the biomarker examination is and what the consequences might be. Um, with regards to Alzheimer's disease, as an example, um, we would diagnose a neurodegenerative disorder that at the present time we do not have a disease modifying therapy for. And although it is reasonable to diagnose Alzheimer's disease in the mild cognitive impairment domain, it is advisable to, to perhaps um, carry out 
um, biomarker counseling um, to make sure the patient understands the consequences of um, these biomarker studies.